When thinking about artillery guns and mobility, the immediate thought is that the two don't really match. Surprisingly though, knowing the human drive and tenacity for technology advancement, they already started to strap big howitzers on top of tractors back in the day. This was at the end of the First World War and during the quiet time post that. But in 1935, General Manstein came along with an idea of an armoured mobile artillery piece that could support the infantry in assaults. Thus, the Sturmgeschutz, or known in the West as the Stug tank, was created. Now this video will not take us back to the very start of the development, but more so focus on one of the most profound models of its class, the Stug 3G. The Stug 3 Alfs G was the final production variant of the Stug 3 following from the F8 and being produced from December 1942 all the way to April 1945 with roughly 7,800 being produced in total. Like all German AFVs of the time period, many changes were introduced during production. Here are some of the more notable changes included, in no particular order. The Alfs G's main change was a new casemate. Compared to its predecessor, this new casemate was wider with sides that were inclined slightly inwards by 10 degrees. The rear of the casemate was now vertical and the rear of the roof was now level with the front. The roof was also fitted with the rotating commander's cupola and a shorter extractor fan mounting. It has smoke grenade launchers on the sides of the front most section of the casemate, three per side like the Panzer 4G. These were later removed and replaced by the Navertigungswaffe, positioned on the opposite side of the roof to the gunner's periscopic sight. A new cast mantlet was added and a coaxial MG34. It had a roof mounted MG34 in a Rundumsfuhrer remote mounting operated by a periscope from the inside of the vehicle. The same system is used in the Jagdpanzer 38T Hetzer. On the G model, Zimmerit anti-magnetic mine coating was also applied. A 80mm single piece armor on the front hull and front right superstructure replaced the older 50mm plate with an additional 30mm face hardened plate bolted on top. Some additional features included steel return rollers, strengthened final drives, a steel shot deflector in the front of the cupola, jurtsen or side skirts as you can see here, and pistol boards. Now in game, the Stug 3 Alfs G is a reasonably early production vehicle as it lacks the latter additions by the Schurten or side skirts. Compared to the previous models though, the G variant of the Stug 3 tank destroyer comes with a thicker armor of up to 80mm on the front glacius and a 75mm Stug 40 L48 gun that gives the vehicle characteristics on par with the Panzer IV. With this cannon on a low profile construction due to its casemate design, the Stug 3G can prove to be a formidable vehicle in the ambushing role. While comparatively well armored to the other tank destroyers of its battle rating, it is not well protected enough to allow it to be a frontline assault tank. It is not recommended to attempt angling this vehicle more than 30 degrees to the enemy, as the sides are paper thin and will easily be penetrated if you attempt to angle the front. One slight advantage this tank has over the previous models of the Stugs is the side skirts, which may prevent damage from incoming HE and E shells. What to note though, is that they do not provide a large protection bonus for incoming AP rounds. A penetration to the driver port can knock out the driver, gunner and commander as they all sit in a line. So looking at the side skirts again, it's really a 50-50 protection barrier for the tank. Chances are, some lucky gunner is going to catch you on the side and send you packing back to your parents for the weekend due to the insurmountable amount of rage you will generate. If the enemies are approaching you to flank, try to shake your hull around and make it harder for them to shoot your tracks and transmission. Defensively, since the Stug 3G is a casemate vehicle, the key to survival is putting distance between you and the enemy. When the enemy starts to close the distance, keep your gun pointed in their direction and hit the reverse gear. Best way to explain this is doing the Michael Jackson moonwalk. Well, without the fancy shoes and hat of course. But if you like to get dressed like that while playing this game, 
I guess that's your thing. Uh, it's a bit on the weird side, I'm not gonna lie. If the enemy has destroyed one of your tracks, you're still able to turn in a circle and fight. Even when being fired upon, try and sit still for as long as possible to repair that track, as it is actually, in fact, your main lifeline. If your transmission or engine is taken out, you must call upon friendly forces to defend you or help you with repair or drag you back to cover. But let's be honest, this is War Thunder, so chances are next to nothing. I must say that the model for this tank is not entirely accurate to spec, as it's an older build in the game. But yes, going back to that transmission, it is a really bad part of the tank. You just don't want to take a hit on it. No one likes to wait to repair with the anxiety looming over your head. But we all must accept that is what War Thunder does, and in fact, any tank simulator. But it's not all doom and gloom actually. It's because of this feature that it really keeps this tank in the fight. Ah yes, the artillery piece, the 75mm Stuck 40 cannon. Now, talking about the cannon, the 75mm Stuck 40 stays reliably accurate around 1000 meters. Beyond 1200 meters, the loss of accuracy becomes a real handicap, especially with the poor magnification of the gunner's optics. It is recommended to take positions which will allow you to shoot at enemies at medium to long ranges below 1000 meters. So, the deal is to really keep this in mind when getting into a fight. You kind of need to find that sweet spot because if you don't, well, we have already spoken about you visiting your relatives having to cope with the post rage effects. So yes, keep this in mind please. The gun has a limited traverse on the horizontal axis. This can make the tracking of the target difficult as targets going to the left or right can quickly move out of your gun sight. Take that constraint into account when positioning your hull in a firing spot and aiming. The traverse speed of the gun, however, is decent in comparison to other tank destroyers at the battle rating, which makes your targeting process fast, even in the case of hull repositioning. Oh, and by the way, it's at the battle rating of 4.0, in case you are wondering. I didn't forget. Elevation and depression angles of the gun is poor. So you may have to sit on top or slightly over a hill to shoot at targets below you, or be driving up a hill to shoot at targets above you. Shooting at planes is not recommended in this vehicle, as you are unlikely to hit it unless it's flying directly at you at eye level. Okay, let's be honest. I know you are going to try and drop a plane from the sky with it. We all do it, right? I mean, the chances are like 0.0004%, but hey, claim to fame, baby. Okay, I made that statistic up, by the way. Let's move on now to the good stuff. Back off. Oh yes, what a shot, what a shot, what a shot. That is one for the books. I literally almost three, 360 no scope. That's how we do it. I might be able to be sneakish. There we go. Took my time. And that's what happens. Your reload time is similar to vehicles at the same BR, if not a little shorter than average actually. This can make follow-up shots quick if the enemy isn't destroyed on the first shot. The recoil is average for a German vehicle and not high enough to throw your gun too far off target leaving you completely direction screwed. Be aware that it will affect you if you are balanced on a ledge or firing at your maximum horizontal angles. Now that would leave you screwed completely, not gonna lie. But enough about the gun, we all know it does its job if you are using it correctly with the APCBC, HEAT or HE rounds. There is one characteristic however that we all can agree with that really gives it a unique presence on the field. It's that short stocky armored bulldog look. I mean, you would think that yes, first in line is the order of the day, but you'll be very very much mistaken. Looks here can be deceiving indeed. Remember when I mentioned about the artillery and tractors? Well, that is what the stall represents. And when you think artillery, you think distance, right? Exactly. 
The Tank Destroyer is best played as a support vehicle. Unlike its predecessors, it has excellent armor and can be nearly invincible from long ranges. So keep that in mind. However, if playing the Stug close to the front lines, for example capturing points, this armor will not be adequate against the close range power of most vehicles as you are about to witness. You see, any shot which penetrates the armor will most likely destroy the vehicle due to its tight interior layout. The sides are a weak point from any ranges and angles actually, so try not to show them to the enemy at all. We have been through this already. It's recommended to support teammates from the flanks, attack from long ranges and refrain from closing the distance even for objectives unless necessary. If you are properly concealed, the enemy will not know where they are being attacked from as they concentrate their assault forwards. Aha! I'm sure a battle or two might ring for you on this. It did for me. But instead of going through so much pain like I did, why not just follow what I've said? I mean, this will definitely help you improve and hey, you might be the next supposed Michael Wittman. Anyway, before I get too carried away, let's look at the pros and the cons. Here are the pros. It has a powerful 75mm cannon with decent penetration, great accuracy, good velocity, great frontal angled armor of 80mm plus 20mm add-on tracks later on, which gives you basically about 100mm, which is very similar to the Tiger one. It has a competent reverse gear and mobility. Its low silhouette makes the Stug easy to conceal. You have large side skirts that can more or less provide some additional protection against HE and heat. Now for the cons. There are some vertical parts of frontal armor that can be penetrated relatively easily. The fixed casemate superstructure restricts the gun traverse, especially in horizontal and vertical angles. You have no neutral steering, so it can't turn on the spot. One that annoys me, it doesn't have any coaxial weapons, which is used against lightly armored targets or aircraft. And lastly, an HE shell onto the machine gun shield can send the shrapnel down through the hull roof and into the crew compartment. So my final take. The model itself shows its age like all of the other models from 2014. However, it's not as bad as some of the others. The model could certainly use an update, but I wouldn't say it should be a massive priority. The main issues are the lack of pistol ports, the excessive mud and frontal armor. The latter is modeled in-game as a 80mm plate, however, the historical model indicates it should have the 50mm base armor with the additional 30mm faced hardened plates bolted on. So that's actually missing. Also, there's no coaxial gun as what historically was present. But that being said, the tank's price is a really good 55,000 silver lions and 14,000 research points. The optional extras would put you back 13,740 research points and 32,700 silver lions. On the end of it, it's an icon amongst most of the tank fans out there. So, go have fun with it. And on that bombshell, we will catch you next time. Good night.